Welcome to Sassafras Valley. So this is the uh, Shopsmith circle cutting attachment. It uh, bolts onto the table extension. And uh, as such, it's adjustable this way with this or with the extension. You can use it two ways, uh, top down, like it is right now, is for smaller diameter circles, up to 15 inches, okay? That'd be the clearance between here and there. It's intended to be up to 15 inches. Or you can turn it upside down under the table here and have the pin protrude up outside of the table here. And uh, you can end up getting from 15 to, I think it's 36 inch circles. You can do up to a 36 inch circle with it if you have the pin coming up. But anyway, I have a few projects where I'm gonna need to be cutting out some circles. So I've got this set up and what you do is you set it up. There's a piece that's missing off of this that allows you to aim this exactly. So the tip of this pin is straight in line with the front edge of the teeth here. I don't have that attachment, I've lost it somewhere. So uh, it's, it may cut off just a little bit, but if anything, it'll, it'll favor to the outside because I'm in front of the teeth. So it'll favor a larger circle. Uh, on a circle this size, it shouldn't be a problem. If I was cutting a real small circle, <clears throat> it might pinch the blade. But at any rate, what I'm gonna do is this is a piece of, of se uh, seven eighths, well actually 13 sixteenths, hard maple. And uh, I wanna cut this out. I don't know what the, the exact dimension of the circle is. Let me get my tape measure out here. And we'll burn an inch. And it is, uh, yeah, five and a half inches. Just a touch over five and a half inches. Uh, so I need to move that out so that, well, hold on. To start with, I'm going to take and cut into where I'm close to the circle. So hold on. Get this down as close as I can get it for now. That's not bad there. So, going to move this in. Uh, what did I do with my Allen wrench? Okay. I'm going to move this in to where my center point. I'll bring this up where it's kind of halfway level. <clears throat> Okay. Oh. Whoops. Tighten this first. That'll square it up. And then tighten this. And that'll lock it in place. So now 
I can take this and turn it down and make it tight. I usually cheat just a little and lift up on this to put some tension down and then lock it in place. Should be able to cut. Couple things to know <coughs> is that for small circles like this, you want a quarter inch blade. Uh, I think over about a 15 inch circle, that's when you can go ahead and start using like a 3 8 blade or something like that. You can cut full thickness from as thin as you want to be up to the full six inches worth of uh, uh, clearance that you have underneath the saw here. So I'm going to turn this on and uh, uh, cut. Now I've got to go nice and slow. Uh, if, you put, if you hog it too much, it may try to drift on you, but it should just follow the outside edge of that line pretty well all the way around. See how we do. That's probably enough clearance between here and there, but if I can get it closer, I'll do it. And there I can still see where it, what it's cutting. point jumped on me. Hold on. I didn't have it in the center. It's tracking off. My mistake. Should be easy to fix so let's see. Should have made sure it was in there before I started. Okay. Okay, so it's fairly round. It's not perfect. Like I said, I messed up and didn't have it uh, in the center pivot. But uh, how do you go about getting them round? Well, there's lots of different ways to do it. <clears throat> uh, but what I did is I made a modification to this fixture right here. So I can use it against my sanding disc and get them exactly perfectly round. So I'll set that up and I'll show you how that works. Okay, I want to uh, mount this 
along the fence here so that I can then put this on and use it to uh, control the spin of the disc as I round the outside. However, I need, I want to use the regular uh, T-lock that comes with the shopsmith to do this, but that is a tapped hole and this is a tapped hole. So there's no way to draw it tight and hold it in place. So what I did is I went to the other end here and drilled a through hole. So now I should be able to take a bolt, pass it through, and screw it into the T-lock, install it along the fence, and tighten it down. Grab a square. And I'll need to align this, but just for demonstration. Okay. When I get it in place, where it's just past the center of the top radius of the disc. I can tighten it down and that's pretty tight. That'll do it. take the disc and I'll need to put a spacer block underneath it <clears throat> so I'll just use this other one as a spacer block for now I'll grab a flat piece in a minute okay and I can install center finder or the center control install that in the center pivot hole there and I should be able to do this just like I did I should be able to spin it and round it okay Okay, should work. Let me uh, get this all set up and uh, we'll try one. Yeah, okay, so. Now I better get that cleaned up before it sets up. I think I got enough glue on it that time.
Okay, you'll notice that the disc is starting to burn the wood a little bit, okay? You can see some of it down in there too, where it's burnt. That's because the buildup of glue on here, most of the glue is gone, okay? There might be just a little bit left, but it's not gonna affect it. Uh, so what I'll do, well, let me show you first off. I can take the sanding, the, the cleaner, the disc cleaner, and then I'm on the wrong side here, so bear with me. Okay, see I can clean the dust off of it real easy, but that glue ain't coming off. So in order to keep from burning the wood, I'm gonna have to uh, uh, move it out. So what I'll do is I'll move this out this way, which will put it out farther this way onto the disc and give it a clean place to uh, do the final cut. I have less than an eighth of an inch to cut here. Okay. So let me get that set up and then we'll uh, finish the uh, rounding. We've got just a little bit here in one place where it's not matching up, but every place else I've got a nice round outside diameter. I'm also going to slow it down just a little bit, see if I can stop some of the burning. Uh, not much. I'm setting at uh, G which is 1,450 RPMs. And I'll slow it down to about 1,300. One more pass will do it to uh, get the shape, and then I can. I'm gonna clean it up first. You see, I got a little more glue on it. But part of that's also the fact that it's fine and it has has uh, pitch in it. So southern yellow pine. So let me clean that up and then we'll make another clean up pass.
bit of burning on it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one more time, find a clean place, and take a really, really light cut. Take a really, really light cut so that it doesn't, uh, I'll put it right here in between the two. I got a strip right there I can hit. Uh, so that it doesn't, uh, so that it's got a nice smooth surface. Because there's a few places along here where it's uh, a little burnt. That's not there, that's pitch. You see there's a little burning in there. A little dab in there. So I'll go ahead and get this uh, cleaned up. And uh, we can go from there. That's a uh, pitch there. That's a pitch pocket. You can see it on the, even coming out the top here. That's a pitch pocket there. This is perfectly round. Okay. And concentric with the center mark. I like it. It uh, won't replace routing on everything, but it would replace it on uh, doing, doing circular plates for me. This simple modification to the bandsaw circle cutting jig really worked out slick for me. Solved a problem I'd dealt with for some time. Hope you stay tuned. This is the first in a series of three videos on a project I'm working on. I do appreciate you watching and you have nothing less than a wonderful day.